morning. This is Triple MFM. It's a beautiful day, great day for the waves, fine and sunny all the way through, top temperature of 27 degrees in the city. Peter Stuyvesant presents the Australian Wave Ski Championships, DY Beach, from next Monday morning. The finals will be held from 7 Sunday morning, the 16th, with the grand final hitting the water 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. The Peter Stuyvesant Australian Wave Ski Championships are your chance to see the top wave ski competitors in the country, fighting it out for the men's first prize of $2,000 plus ski, wetsuit and trophy, plus many With the contest prizes. only days away, many competitors, aware of the high standard of surfing required to win, waste no time getting into the water. Ski riding has become the fastest growing area of surfing, involving individuals of all ages, from the weekend recreational rider to highly competitive professionals, whose desire to reach new levels of performance has produced many innovations. The rider being strapped onto the ski, combined with deep feet wells for high speed control of the shortened ski, has permitted radical new maneuvers, such as full rail bottom turns and aerial roller coasters off the top of the wave. Wave ski riding attracts people from varied backgrounds. Contest director, Phil Avalon, successfully combines a career as an actor and feature film producer with his talent as a wave ski designer and manufacturer. He spends most of his spare time in the water, testing and refining his designs. Phil is one of the top rated riders in Australia and is a seeded competitor for these titles. I think the standard of this competition is just incredible. You know, I've seen some fabulous riders, so it's not going to be as easy as one would have imagined six months ago. she has only ridden for a year, Jane Hall is top seed for the women's title. As a marine biologist, Jane has a natural affinity for the ocean and feels that wave ski riding is now an important part of her life. Wave ski riding is an exciting sport. It's an exciting medium being out on the water. I like to try and get out before and after work when conditions are suitable. It's good fun. Michael Petrie is considered to be the strong favourite for this contest. In his profession as an osteopath and chiropractor operating his own clinic, Michael is acutely aware of the need for complete physical conditioning to maintain his powerful, aggressive approach to wave ski riding. Consequently, he spends every available moment in the water. Well, I'm very aggressive in the water, looking for the most out of each surf I go out in, looking for the most out of each wave I take off on. So I am aggressive paddling through the surf because of the nature of the size of our skis. We have to be to get out in the shortest time as possible and definitely aggressive towards the wave when I take off. The new breed of wave ski riders are pushing their performance to new heights. The Peter Stuyvesant wave ski titles brings together riders from all over the world. And for the first time, they'll be able to compare style, technique and equipment. 
The Moby Dick Club in Whale Beach is the venue for pre-contest drinks and riders draw for eliminations to be held over the next two days. New South Wales first heat. paid professionals with vast experience in all aspects of competitive surfing. They score riders for wave selection, wave positioning, degree of difficulty in completing manoeuvres and style. wave ski to be ridden in Australia was at North Narrabeen in 1935 by Bert Lloyd. This ski was 15 feet long and made of ply. I'd always get two other blokes to carry it down for me so I won't be able to paddle it out. In the years leading up to World War II, Bert won three Australian paddle ski titles and at 84 he's still as keen as ever. The wave ski of today is a far cry from those of yesteryear. One of the leaders in revolutionising the design of wave skis is Roger Shackleton, an excellent rider. Roger is widely respected as a stylist and innovator, recently winning the New South Wales title. I'm trying to get as close to surfboard design as possible, uh, which basically means getting rid of a lot of the problems that skis have had for years. Trying really hard to get much more positive, tighter turns off the bottom and off the top, enabling us to surf in a more vertical manner the closer we're going to get the boards. The first day's competition was over and the heat winners moved into the next round while the unsuccessful entrants have to wait another year for a chance to make the finals. Competition on day two will sort out the remaining 22 participants to meet the 10 seeded riders in the finals. It's hot early and they're all anxious to get into the water. The swell is up from yesterday, and organisers and contestants alike hope that the incoming tide will increase the size even further. The judges bring their own portable shade in preparation for a long, hot day. Newport Beach in California. People have been skiing in the United States for between 15 and 20 years, high performance type wave skiing for at least 10 years. Don brought with him, especially for this competition, a prototype of a revolutionary new molded wave ski. It's finless, it's made out of a soft foam and it is moderately flexible. Mangla Mansami, a lifeguard from South Africa, has traveled around the world. For the past two years, he has lived in Australia and begun a new career as an actor. Australia has some of the finest surf ski riders in the world. The skis are world standard, best I've ever seen. Mark Rabinet, 
from Biarritz in the south of France, which is the center of European wave ski riding, is a classic stylus. The waves are very good in Australia. It is exciting to be in this competition with so many good wave ski riders. Mark looked at home in the Australian conditions. Could it be the Riviera atmosphere on the beach? sandbar close to the beach provides spectators with excitement plus. Many of the contestants underestimate the power of these closeouts. ideal conditions. John Mingram from Cronulla, riding in the last heat of the day, shows style and determination that should carry him from eliminations right into the finals to be held over the next two days. Saturday's events are cancelled due to strong onshore winds which make surfing impossible. Yesterday blew directly onto a three feet northeast well that was none too strong anyway and has pushed it right down as well. The wind will swing to the northeast today through an onshore direction so it's not looking red hot at all for the semi-finals of the Peter Stuyvesant Australian wave ski titles for today but the guys haven't really had excellent conditions right from the start so they'll battle on and uh, hopefully with northeasters tomorrow it'll be a lot better. This is James Jackson. Early Sunday morning discussions among the riders centre around problems of holding the competition. Although less than ideal conditions prevail, organisers decided to go ahead and finalise the competition in hope that the waves will pick up on the incoming tide. First event to get underway is the women's final. As a sport, wave ski riding is rapidly gaining popularity amongst women, even though it is so physically demanding. Jane Hall's greater wave knowledge stands out as she picks up most of the better waves in the final. Because of shortage of time, the contest marshal keeps heats on schedule by having riders out in the water awaiting the completion of the previous heat. Riders are now having difficulty in predicting what the waves will do. Most waves are short and spectacular, with riders achieving hard bottom turns and aerial re-entries. are few and far between, but are highly sought after, since they enable contestants to accomplish a maximum number of point-getting manoeuvres per ride. Surfing in such heavy conditions is so physically and emotionally demanding that many competitors are only too happy to finish their heat. Commercial and national television networks are on hand to capture the atmosphere and excitement of the final. Doug Holliday from Newcastle is thriving in these conditions. A former surfboard rider, he applies that knowledge and skill to his wave ski performance. John Christensen found the going easier after the torturous training required to become Australian junior canoe champion. It was clear he would challenge pre-contest favourite Michael Petrie for the title. By mid-afternoon, the contest is narrowed down to the final four. Paul Wise, 
John Christensen, Roger Shackleton and Michael Petrie. The waves are still holding, but cold onshore winds are increasing, making it unpleasant for all concerned. The first final sees current New South Wales champ Roger Shackleton up against John Christensen. The heats will take place immediately and will last for 20 minutes with a 10 wave maximum. John goes for more spectacular moves, but Roger, with his vast contest experience, proves too tough. Winner by one point was Roger Shackleton. The remaining final is between Paul Wise and Michael Petrie. While catching his breath, Roger keeps a close eye on both riders in the water. Michael edges out Paul to move into the grand final. Will this be a repeat of the New South Wales titles with Roger the victor? Or will the younger, more aggressive Michael Petrie reverse that outcome? to the lineup is almost impossible with incessant waves pounding both competitors getting caught here means the loss of valuable time roger flows through the unpredictable sections while michael chooses to power into the crushing white water pull out all stops as neither can gauge how well the other is bearing. of intensive competition. Both riders return to the judging area to well-deserved applause. Here they will await the decision and receive their respective trophies. First place in the Australian wave ski titles goes to Jane Hill from Manly. In third place in the men's, John Christensen from Curl Curl. The runner-up, Roger Shackleton from Manly. The national champion for 1980, Michael Petrie.
Stuyvesant wave ski titles saw the high standard of performance attained by riders today. The potential is there, no doubt, for new excellence to be reached as future top-level competitions demand even more from both rider and ski. <laughs>